So we move on to our final NBA game before the entire MLB card is broken down. And this one, Sunday, May 19th, game seven between the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Denver Nuggets. We are in Ball Arena in Denver, Colorado. This is as big as basketball games get. The defending champions pushed to the brink. We will get the uh, header up for this game here in a second by Jose. Let's talk about the spot. Let's talk about the line history. First off, we've got to move over to Sunday action. We've already heard from Troy Torrance in the chat. Troy Torrance is moving on his Minnesota Timberwolves. Take a look at the spread right now. We are sitting here with Minnesota plus four and a half at minus 106. They opened up at four. There's been a half point move. This line came out at 12, 13 a.m. Eastern time. And in the first eight hours, it was a half point move. Actually, to be honest with you, this, sorry, I didn't even see that. This move to four and a half within 29 minutes. There was a two cent move after about seven hours. So that's where we stand with the spread. With the total here, we have Denver sitting right now at 197.5 for a total. That is absolutely wild. Opening up at 198.5, it's dropped a point to 197.5. Wow. That is absolutely wild. BJ says, tough game. May just watch it and relax Sunday. So I think the worst case scenario for the Timberwolves was that the Nuggets were completely embarrassed again. I really do. The worst case scenario. Like the triple up that we bet on the Nuggets in game three. Now, I don't know if we need to triple up here. I haven't, you know, let's hear what the chat has to say about the spot. Let's hear what Bobano has to say about the spot. But I want Denver in game seven at home. And this is a fair number. This series is played at 92.25 possessions a game, a little slower than both teams have played throughout the playoffs, but that's fine. They're both comfortable with it. Minnesota has shot the ball very well in the first round and in the second round. Uh, consistent numbers. I mean, that's what we can expect from them. 48 from the field, 36 from three. Denver has shot a little better than you would think. You know, they've been completely embarrassed in two of these six games, and they're still shooting 46 from the field and 37.4 in the series. And Edwards is everything that you could hope for in a young star. He's got the confidence. He's got the swagger. He, 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 he cares about the game. He wants to play all 82 games a season. He goes for 27. Uh, he delivers all of the knockout punches early. Jaden McDaniels, you get the outlier performance, goes for 21 and plays great defensively. He's so long and tough on the perimeter. Conley comes back, puts up 13. Gobert, Cat, and Nas Reed get rebounds. A battle. You know, it was a great bounce back spot defensively for Gobert. He was a problem in the paint. Uh, Jokic only has 22 points. Jamal Murray, nowhere to be found. I mean, what happens with Jamal Murray if he's nowhere to be found in game seven? Now, you know, he always steps up in situations like this. Why wouldn't he hear? I believe he will hear, but four of 18 from the field. The bench for the Nuggets was nowhere to be found. Now, that made us a lot of money in the Operation Garcia, but good God, the bench was outscored 36 to 9. That's a real problem. Aaron Gordon, 12 and 8. Nuggets shot 7 for 36 from 3. Uh, they were way behind all game long. Uh, 14 points. In well, the they quit quarter. too when they got way behind. Let's be real. They quit. I mean, they just oh, knew yeah. game seven was coming and let's just get ready for Sunday. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah, no. I, I mean, it's a it was a nice situation for them to be able to, to, to do that. Um, But they still shot seven for 36 from three. I mean, all these are just the stats, right? I'm just telling you the stats situation. So the way I see it is if, if the Nuggets had have lost a nail biter, it would have been much better for the Timberwolves and to completely embarrass them yet again. So I think we'll see the champion team step up. Uh, I believe that everybody who's backed the Timberwolves throughout the series and who's on the Timberwolves is just going to back them again. Uh, that's part of the reason why I keep pushing the undoing project. Now, now this doesn't always work. 
this that mindset, and it didn't work in the Hurricanes Rangers game. As I said, look at this line on the Rangers plus 140. Who in their right mind wouldn't want to bet this? Who would not want to bet? I mean, it's just screaming at you. It doesn't make sense. And I was driving back home uh, yesterday before the games popped off. And on the radio, at Toronto Radio, this guy is, you know, obviously he's not a, you know, he's just a wreck gambler. He has a sports show. He's like, they're like, what's your play tonight? He's like, well, I couldn't believe the Rangers were plus 140. Of course, I have to bet the Rangers. And I was like, exactly. But that doesn't always work. Look, Rangers came back and won the game. You know, so I, that that mentality doesn't doesn't always work. But here, I going to back the Denver Nuggets, and I would be shocked if anybody who is on the Wolves all season or sorry all series long could get off of them here. And that's the 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 mess that the subconscious does with us is that you can't get off of something that's working or that you believe in. You can't, in, in, in Bobano talked about it when we talked about NHL playoffs, you sometimes you got to pivot off and I have a tough time doing that. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong for you guys who've been on the Timberwolves throughout the series to stay on them. Trust me, I'm not, but I'm saying that, that that's a real problem. And that's why the undoing project by Michael Lewis is such an important book that I pushed everybody because it helps you see these things differently. Take it away, Bobano game seven, Timberwolves nuggets. Yeah, this is a, um, this is a fascinating game seven. But I'm not going to overthink it. Um, Minnesota credit to them, and that, I, that's exactly why I didn't take Denver last night because everyone was saying everything was pointing toward Denver's grab control of the series. Minnesota has not been able to punch back. Um, but I figured, you know, Minnesota one last shot at it on their home floor in Game Six. Denver knowing they have Game Seven at home in their back pocket if need be, and I said, let's. Let's not take Denver because I do think Minnesota will have their best response. Now, I did not see, obviously, them blowing Denver out like that, you know, start to finish. You could tell in the first quarter that game was over early. It was just an outstanding performance by the uh, Timberwolves. And, and they, more importantly, yes, Anthony Edwards was good, but he finally got a lot of support. Is that same support going to be there on the road in Denver against a Nuggets team that is just absolutely, absolutely just, you know, obviously that was a brutal game blown out they quit you know in the third fourth quarter when they fell that behind uh in the game um i think you're going to see a different denver team uh i'll go ahead and take them laying the points just full game we'll take denver here minus the uh uh four and a half uh, in this game uh we've seen enough of this nuggets team to know uh, about their ability uh championship pedigree wise um and look i st i stand by it Jamal Murray really hasn't had a great game in this series. Is he really going to go seven games without that prototypical Jamal Murray uh, making every shot, you know, taking every, making every big play uh, in a, a critical game like this? We know he's a big time player and a big shot maker. You know, what a time for him to show that once again here, you know, in game seven on Sunday, you know, in a series when he really hasn't, you know, consistently shown it. So Pinnacle has Denver minus four. Minus 115, that's what we're going to lock in. Denver minus four for game seven. Minus 115 at Pinnacle. Minus four, minus 115. Tori talking about when was the last time a defending champion came out of the second round. Look, we, we talked about that that's right in the beginning of this series. <laughs> you know, it's been a long time. Uh, you know, and the Lakers got swept out. Remember uh, the other team, but they've all failed at the, in this round. And look, um, Doug says the public will be all over the Nuggets. I don't know if that's the case. Uh, we we don't know right now what's going on with the markets here. They're not. It's you know two days away. We don't know, but I don't think so. And the reason being is because uh, people remember the recency bias and vividness bias are both huge issues. But I always think the recency bias is a little deeper than the vividness bias and, and there's you could you could fight that you could argue with me and there would be a fine debate you could say that vividness is much more because it's stuck with you so but for for the gambling public they think there's a changing of the guard and it's the minnesota timberwolves and ant I, you know you just feel that way and and the nuggets are you know with with jamal murray throwing the heat pack and and and, and being a, a baby in that game he he lost or he fueled hatred against them. Stephen Hairston, our guy, great to see you. He says, uh, Wolves pull it out. 
Uh, Mally Mouse says, won't be betting, but we'll be cheering on the Wolves. Doug says, people will back Jokic. I'm very interested to see the market. Um, BJ says, I do believe more tickets will be on Denver. We'll see, though. It's going to be very interesting. Joe Yukovic says, the biggest home edge in the four major sports, Denver Nuggets. And Steve G says, big edge to the champs in Game 7. In my One of the angles that my dad always bet was the home team in Game 7. Home team in Game 7. He just in NHL and NBA home team in game seven. Now, one thing that also was talked about by my dad all the time was how home ice in in hockey and in the in home court in the playoffs is not well, basketball is a little different because home court is more important than home ice in the regular season. Uh, home ice in the regular season is not that big a deal. But you get to the playoffs and home ice is so important. Fans are going bonkers. It's electric. It's exciting. And the refs develop a bit of a bias. And the biggest bias, according to scorecasting, is game seven refs supporting the home team. The yeah. biggest bias in all – that that's their claim in that book, that that's the biggest bias in all of sports – is refs helping out the home team in a sold out game seven in their subconscious? So we'll see how it all bangs out. But I'm going to join. Foster definitely does. I can. I, I definitely believe that with him. Watch to see if he's maybe officiating this game. Bobano on the Nuggets minus four. Is this not incredible? What a weekend we have ahead of us. Yep. And this is for Sunday game seven, baby. Game seven. And we could have game seven of Knicks Pacers. We'll see. We will see. Bobano, excellent work, my friend. Thank you for rocking with us here Friday. Um, Betting with the bag of Pub Sports Radio. Uh, Coming off a five and one day in NHL. Bobano, we need you to stay hot, my friend. Yep. And thank you for sharing your wisdom and your angles and your thought process behind your action please support bobano on x at bobano bets remember it's a new x handle at bobano bets and uh thank you and of course the ice guys support the ice guys bobano any last words for the capri sporting show it's a great weekend we've got it's a great weekend because all of these second rounds in the nhl and nba were hitting six and seven so game sixes and game seven. So it's the crux of these series. It's the climax that should make for some tremendous drama and theater and excitement uh, all weekend long. Uh, so looking forward to it. Shout out to everyone in the chat at the like button. Jimmy, we'll see you next Friday. Good luck to you as well.